Good morning. I'm Faye Thompson. This morning we're going to do a southern recipe that everybody in the south does, I guess. It's fried okra. If you're going to fry the okra, you want a pot about this size. You want to cut the end off of it, cut this end off of it, and then I would cut it about put on a fourth or a half inch, but you just cut it up like that. You throw this part away. This recipe calls for a pound. There might be a little over a pound, but it doesn't make any difference as long as your batter it will wrap over it. First of all, we're going to do two eggs, and I'm going to save the yolks. It's just a glue, a food glue. And I'll save the egg yolk, and I'll put it in a cornbread or something. Slightly beat these eggs a little bit, not much. Egg whites, twist them up a little bit. And then we're going to pour that over the okra. And we're going to mix that real good. You want to be sure and get it coated good with those egg whites because that's what keeps the coating on it. I think that's mixed pretty good cup of biscuit. If you don't have biscuit, you can use half flour and half cornstarch. I had some and I like to use this, so we're going to put that in this bowl. And next, we're going to do something that's real unusual. I ground these peanuts. These are roasted peanuts now. And I ground them up real fine. It's supposed to be three quarters of a cup, but there's a little bit more than that there. I, I put them in that mixer and they come out a little more, so I just left them on there. Well, we mix this up real good. And we got our peanut oil heating on the stove somewhere in between 350 and 375. Now, we're ready to put our okra in the We want it coated real good. The roasted peanuts makes this taste real good. I have a friend that gives us a gallon of roasted peanuts every Christmas. And you know, that's just about what I use all year. Okay, we're ready to put this in the fryer now. And this is peanut oil that we're frying them in. I like to cook in any little electric pan and I use it because you can get a correct temperature. Ah, people in the south, they have all kind of ways to cook fried okra. You know, some put cornmeal on it. It looks like it's browning real good. That's what we wanted. Okra, as, as far back as I can remember, my mother cooked it, my mother-in-law cooked it, all, all the country people. And uh, when I'm telling you something, I noticed about the self-rising flour. I have to tell you my experience as a poor girl that lived in the Delta, and I'm sure that a lot of people had plain flour, all-purpose flour. But I, when I tell you that people did not use that to use self-rising. I'm telling you what they did in the Delta, the farm people and the poorer people. They couldn't afford to have two different flowers, so they only had the self-rising flower. I thought that might be confusing to some of you because I'm sure the people had money. But they had all-purpose flower way back years ago. We just didn't have it. You can see the peanuts on it. See how they look on it? It really, really tastes good, too. You'll like this if you try it. Uh, okra is used in soups, it's, and there's a recipe of just okra and tomatoes. It's really good. Maybe we do a video on that one day. Okra is really popular, and I always raise it in a garden. It's easy to raise, but you know, I don't have a garden this year. I'm just getting too old. Next month, I'll be 91, so September is my birthday. And I felt like I was just too old to continue raising a garden. And 
I enjoyed it though. I love to have a garden. One time, my husband, he thought he was gonna raise some okra. I didn't remember how many acres. My son says 40 acres, I know it was a lot. And he had me making little sacks to pick it. You know, they look like little small, I don't know if you've ever seen a cotton pick sack or not. That's so far, this generation doesn't know much about that kind of stuff. But it fit over your shoulder, and the pickers would go out and pick this okra, put it in these bags. Well, at this time, we did have a, a farmhouse that had air conditioning. They picked that okra, and it didn't have a place to put it till they got it to market. I had to clean out a bedroom, keep that okra cool, and then he uh, couldn't find enough labor to pick it. Uh, he ended up making more money out of the seed than he did the okra. But one year was all he did that. He didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> he stuck with his rice and soybeans and mallow and wheat. Uh, we raised cotton for about 15, 20 years after we married, I guess, and then our soil was better for uh, rice, our money crop was rice. A lot of the land, talking about the soil, that we farmed, uh, you had a mixed soil, but you also had a soil called gumbo. It's a black, black soil. And if you didn't know how to farm that, you almost had to be raised on the farm to know how to farm it. And one year, there was a little country near Germany called Liechtenstein. They had bought about 10,000 acres of black land in Texas, and they didn't know how to farm it. So they said, well, we don't want the media to know anything about this country. The prince and princess of Liechtenstein, they came over and they took their shoes off and waited out in the field. My husband was telling how to grow anything in the black land. Uh, my brother, he was always telling jokes. He said, uh, you know, I sent a sample off of that gumbo uh, to get it tested, and they sent me back some food stamps. <laughs> I guess they thought everybody that farmed there is either going to go broke or <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Well, hey, hey, I don't think that happened. I think he just told that. Uh, I, you just do this to taste anyway, so. I'll need to stir that up some. Okay, we have finished. I think it's a pretty dish. Now our okra has finished, and I hope you try this, and I hope you enjoy it as much as my family does. And I hope you watch us on another video. Thank you for watching.